On this week's NFES SDN Reality Check, we speak with Versa Networks to discuss the importance of testing and interoperability for NFE and SDN. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's NFE SDN Reality Check. I'm your host, Dan Meyer, Editor-in-Chief at RCR Wireless News. Well, as the telecom market continues its drive towards virtualizing network operations, one of the more common concerns we hear from operators are issues surrounding interoperability. Just as in legacy hardware-based network architectures, telecom operators are reliant on their software-based solutions being able to speak with each other regardless of who the vendor is. For this week's featured interview, we speak with Kumar Mehta, who's the CEO and co-founder of Versa Networks, to get his view on the importance of testing and interoperability for NFE and SDN. Let's take a look at the interview now. Well, thanks everyone for joining us this week. Uh, this week, we are joined by uh, Kumar Mehta, who's the uh, CEO and co-founder of Versa Networks, to talk a bit about the company and some insight into the uh, virtualization space. So Kumar, thanks so much for joining us this week. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Dan, for inviting me. Very good. Let me just start off with a little overview of, of the company there for those who might not know much about you guys. Yeah, sure. You know, Versa Network's uh, whole vision is to transform our service providers and enterprise build branch and WAN networks. And our whole pedigree uh, is from the telco space where before we started Versa Networks, we worked at Juniper Networks uh, where we were responsible for the MX series platform. And uh, after the MX series platform, we were also responsible for the packet core uh, solution which Juniper developed called Mobile Next, uh, which uh, was one of the most scalable packet core solution out there. Uh, and as you know, MX series itself is a flagship platform for Juniper uh, and it's been doing extremely well for them. Very good, very good. Maybe we'll touch back a little bit later on also on, on your guys' telecom background because that is a very interesting part of what you guys do. I mean, a lot of companies I talk to on the show uh, come from perhaps a different space, uh, for instance. And so it's kind of interesting to have a company that comes from a telecom background space working on the virtualization side of things as well. So we'll get back to that later. But, uh, but let me start off with, I know I wanted to get some insight from you. I know recently you guys uh, did some work with, uh, I believe it's EMC, on, on some validation work. Uh, can I guess maybe get a little, little insight into what that was and the importance of, of that work with, with EMC? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, EMC chose to enter the telecom space uh, as an NFVI vendor. And when they wanted to be the NFVI vendor of choice, uh, where all the VNFs uh, run on their x86 offering. And uh, clearly that happened during the Mobile World Congress uh, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when they looked around, they wanted to make sure they, the first thing they did is to engage with a leader in the space. So they came uh, and engaged with us to uh, make sure our VCP, VCPE offering uh, ran on their, um, on their, NA, on their NFVI. And uh, what it resulted into is industry's um, densest VCPE platform uh, where uh, on a six RU uh, 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 servers, you know, they could load as much as 1,000 VCP in less than 10 minutes. Now, for us, we can easily load around uh, 250 VCPs in one RU server. Wow, impressive. I mean, again, how important is that validation work? Because it does still seem like we're at this, at this phase in terms of virtualization uh, platforms where uh, that's becoming an important part. I know operators I've talked to about this, uh, that's still a big concern for them is to make sure that, you know, if they start going down these, these avenues, that, that all this stuff can kind of work as a whole package. Uh, I guess from you guys' point of view, how important was this validation work with EMC? Uh, so in terms of uh, how important it is um, for uh, EMC, clearly they want to be the vendor of choice for NFVI yeah. uh, in the telco space. And in the telco space, as you know, NFE is a new trend where the telcos themselves are looking for uh, more efficiency uh, from uh, the hardware offering. Uh, they uh, do not get their efficiency from the proprietary uh, offerings from other vendors. So they clearly want to make sure they are able to run uh, software on commodity hardware. And that is where EMC came in with uh, not only the NFVI, but also the orchestration uh, engine uh, to orchestrate our VCPE. And we uh, showcased uh, this uh, not only 
at MWC, but at VMware in Barcelona, as well as in uh, Dusseldorf and a free show last year. Very good. I, I guess, can you describe a bit about, I guess, uh, from EMC's point of view, I maybe, you know, maybe talking for them, for instance, but, but I guess, you know, was there any sort of challenges maybe from you guys' point of view and kind of making this, this validation work? I mean, was there any, anything that kind of had to be tackled by you guys? Anything that you see uh, was, you know, one of those things that kind of cropped up that you weren't, maybe weren't expecting, but were able to kind of surmount at some point uh, during, during the process with them? Um, there was no real challenges we, uh, we faced, uh, you know, getting our NFE, uh, our VNFs running on the NFEI. It was a pretty straightforward process. Well, that's obviously good to hear. I mean, it does seem like that there is progress being made in this. I mean, I know, uh, like I've said, I've talked to some companies about this, and it's still a little concern out there about everybody being able to work together, but it sounds like you guys then were able to make this all uh, work, work pretty seamlessly with, with them. And I guess, you know, for, for operators looking at, you know, maybe an EMC solution, uh, how important is it to be able, you know, for them to kind of now offer your platform as well with theirs uh, to what they're trying to roll into the marketplace? Well, uh, that's an extremely good question. You know, in the end, what operators are looking for is both agility and efficiency, of which they do not get with today's offering out there. And clearly with our combined solution, our VNFs with uh, their NFEI provides them the efficiency part um, and the agility part, which they are looking for. So, uh, so I think it's, uh, you know, it's an extremely important milestone. Uh, in the end, you know, all providers are looking on how to reduce the TCO of their uh, offering uh, and thereby become much more profitable than where they are today offering managed services with proprietary hardware. You know, most of these providers are, you know, essentially having negative margins from that business. And to have to get back to a positive, not only to a positive territory, but much more uh, from a perspective of um, able to uh, deploy this service faster and get to a much much uh, more positive territory is important to the service providers, uh, and that's why uh, you know the combined solution is so attractive to them. Yeah, makes sense. Now, I know another part of kind of this challenge that it seems like operators are going through is, you know, again, trying to make sure that even though they are rolling out these new services, that the security aspect of, as well is also kind of maintained. I mean, obviously, telecom guys have a strong history of being uh, uh, very uh, focused on security, uh, on network quality, network, network integrity. Uh, and so this move towards virtualization is a, is a big, you know, revolution, revolutionary change for them. I mean, they're obviously changing their legacy systems to these new platforms, but they don't want to give up any of that uh, uh, security that they've been used to in the past. I guess I should look at that aspect of it. How has the industry gone in, I guess, tackling those concerns uh, that operators might have in terms of making sure that their, op that their networks are indeed robust enough, secure enough uh, to kind of handle what they're used to doing in the past, but also taking on all these new, you know, IoT and 5G and all these different, you know, new acronyms that are coming out uh, on a daily basis, it seems like, uh, in, in the market. Yeah, so extremely good question, Dan. Um, you know, security in the uh, NFV uh, infrastructure uh, needs to be tackled at multiple layers. Um, one is at the NFVI layer where, you know, you have the hypervisors residing from either from VMware or OpenStack. And clearly service providers are making sure that there are no base, no vulnerabilities in this hypervisors for somebody to come in and take hold of that and can, um, uh, can actually uh, be in the packet path or snoop into the packet path of what is really going on. So clearly that is something they, uh, they make sure that they do a lot of penetration testing on the hypervisor itself um, to make sure they're secure, uh, that they're very hardened. And only, um, only those connections are allowed uh, which are really uh, supposed to be uh, you know, able to get into the management part of the hypervisor. And then the second aspect is also security of the VNFs itself. And you know, when we go to the service providers, you know, every one of those service providers make sure they do a lot of penetration testing uh, to uh, make sure there are no open, there are no vulnerabilities in our offering, and also the all the access to the VNF is uh, is uh, is basically um, uh, metered, and when I mean metered, is who who gets to give the access and what they can do. Uh, all of that is clearly spelled out, and we need to make sure we give them the offering which follows those uh, those considerations. 
Makes sense. I guess as you look at the overall market, I mean, how how close are we, or how how comfortable should operators be in terms of being able to roll out uh, these platforms today? I mean, is it, is this something do you think that you know what you're able to offer, what other companies are able to offer in terms of virtualization? Um, are they robust enough? Do you think today to handle what operators need, or is it uh, should operators be looking still at kind of a uh, maybe a metered rollout of, of virtualization at this point, just to kind of get some familiarity and, and make sure that they are ready to kind of really you know take a bigger bigger piece of the network and, and move it over to virtualization. Uh, you know, f- 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 funny you asking this question. In the last NFV show in Paris, uh, you know that was one of the things which uh, Google folks exhorted the service provider community that please don't wait for the standards to come out before you deploy this thing and get out of the lab environment and start deploying this thing. This, this um, uh, offerings are quite robust, which are out there and they provide you agility, they provide you DevOps model and they provide you much lower cost to unfold the service. So you know, even uh, huge companies like, De- uh, like Google are already deploying NFE in their infrastructure and service providers should do that at a much faster pace. And uh, some of them uh, who are leading edge service providers are already doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And um, uh, some are still in the lab uh, trial mode, but I think um, many of them has to have to graduate fast in in order to rein in uh, the cost and bring the TCO down and also increase the agility. Yeah, those are good points. I mean, I was, yeah, I mean, it does seem like, like you said, some of those telecom guys are a little more advanced, but a little more further along the path. Uh, even talking to them, they've even said that, you know, being able to actually work with this in a commercial environment is, is invaluable at this point. I mean, it gives them such a, an insight into what actually happens out there. And it seems like it's giving them such a, a big lead in the market, too, in terms of, you know, being able to get ahead of everybody else and, again, take advantage of, of the TCO and, and the ROI on, on getting back some investment that they're putting into there. So, uh, yeah, very good insight into kind of what they need to do at this point. Yeah, uh, same. Now, maybe touch a bit about now, like you said, at, at first part of this, you know, you guys do have a bit of a telecom background there. I mean, having worked, uh, again, in the telecom space for years and years here, and it does seem like in the in the virtualization world, it does seem like there's kind of two camps when it comes to vendors at this point. There's the vendors coming from the telecom side, uh, traditional telecom vendors, and there's those coming kind of more from the, maybe the IT and data center side. And, and when I talk to the various vendors about it, you do get kind of a different perspective on you know, how they view how telecom should be moving. Uh, it does seem like the telecom guys seem to be a little more in tune with the fact that uh, uh, operators are a uh, big organization with lots of uh, lots of moving parts, and it's kind of uh, you know they need some comfort, a certain comfort level when it comes to rolling these things out. I guess as you guys look at uh, the overall market today, I mean, is that is that your kind of general view as the fact that you know operators are these kind of uh, d- dynamic, large organizations with certain quality standards and, and things, and they kind of need to really be. Uh, helped a bit when it comes to the move towards towards virtualization. So actually, actually, very good question, Dan. Um, one of the things which I think all the virtualization vendor has to keep in mind uh, is that you know if you have to replace a, a, an appliance with a virtualized offering, it uh, it shouldn't be that the performance coming through the hypervisor is such that you, you know, to replace one appliance, you need 20 servers. So clearly that is not something which the operators are looking for. Operators are looking for high per- performance NFVI uh, infrastructure on which high performance PNFs are running, which give them the same kind of uh, footprint for both from a throughput and performance perspective that they are getting it from the appliance, okay? So they clearly are looking for that kind of, uh, uh, you know, sort of, it has bearing on the TCO side. So they're looking for that kind of TCO return. And secondly, what they are also looking for is that, you know, they, they are, you know, they, you know, essentially they have to, uh, um, you know, move packets through these VNFs. And it shouldn't be that the hypervisor drops packet, um, you know, much more often. And maybe in in their in the in in their deployment scenario, they need to make sure that they achieve maybe one or two packets drop in ten to the power six packets uh, because of voice packet or something which is flowing through the VNF. And the present NFVI infrastructure has to have the capability to allow them uh, to not impede that. In other words, you know, the NFES uh, should allow uh, those packets to flow to the VNFs and not drop them at the hypervisor layer for whatever reason, because of scheduling, uh, whatever. So we worked with 
actually leading um, uh, hypervisor vendors to improve their offering so that their uh, NFVI is robust enough to be considered for NFV deployment. So, so that is where the, the telecom infrastructure providers are coming from. While the IT guys are coming from the DevOps readiness and how fast they can get things going and all that. And that is what these, the telcos can learn from the IT guys, you know, how, how to be more DevOps ready and be able to deploy uh, this service in a very agile manner. Um, so, you know, both camps have to learn something from each other. Um, because their needs are, set, are different. It is not your regular data center deploy application deployment where if the hypervisor drops something, you know, the end-to-end -end stream, the end-to-end -end TCP will recover and, and make sure that, um, you know, the application doesn't get hindered. But some of these folks are moving voice through the VNFs and those packets cannot get dropped. Otherwise, they, they will not be able to offer the, the service. Yeah, that's a great URA. I mean, it definitely seems like you have to have kind of, I guess, a little bit of a mix of both there to really make it work uh, for the operator. But uh, but yeah, you made a good point at the beginning there too, because it does seem like, you know, there's, there's very little reason for an operator to move towards a virtualized platform if it only provides the same uh, performance that they have now, because their, their equipment that they have now uh, is already paid for. It's kind of, they know how it works. There's a good comfort level, uh, unless they're kind of shown some sort of improved performance or, you know, smaller footprint or something. Uh, they need to have some sort of incentive to make the move. Otherwise, you know, it's hard to uh, justify uh, to the CFO there that, hey, we need to make this move because, uh, you know, it, we're, there's, it's no, no benefit down, down the road for them. So, so Yeah, that is why they need, uh, uh, you know, offerings from us and other uh, experienced uh, NFVI vendors who work together to get all the kinks out of uh, an NFE deployment uh, from prior experience yeah. uh, to achieve the performance uh, they need. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Well, maybe one final wrap-up question is, and I guess as you look forward a little bit over the next six to 12 months, you know, for you guys, what are maybe a, a big a big challenge or two that you guys see that might uh, need to be, I guess, surmounted or kind of need to be tackled by, by yourselves or your other partners out there in the vendor community? What do you see as maybe some some challenge that uh, we should be maybe look, looking out for or kind of uh, something that might uh, need to be, uh, I guess, tackled by, by various various parties out there? From the challenge perspective, you know, clearly what uh, all the partners like, our, you know, our vendors like us and the other partners, what we have to do is definitely uh, educate and enable the service provider community to see, you know, how important it is for them to move uh, to this new way of doing business. Uh, and that means, uh, you know, lowering the TCO, which what they care about, increasing the agility, and come up with a DevOps model for, uh, for the services they deploy. Um, and the challenge they themselves also face is that the OTT vendors themselves um, are much faster at deploying these NFV services. Like I give you an example of Google exhorting the service providers to kind of deploy this thing quickly and not be stuck in the lab or, or in some perennial testing mode, um, but you know actually go ahead and deploy it and not wait for standards. Uh, so clearly, if they want to compete with the OTT vendors, they need to adopt the ways of OTT in terms of deploying this service faster, both uh, in terms of agility and get uh, and DevOps readiness. Yeah, definitely a, a mind a mind uh, shift or mind uh, set shift really for these operators to really kind of be uh, to to stay on top of the, the competitive environment. Like because like you said, it's not just the telecom guys anymore competing with each other. It's these OTT guys uh, who have a lot of momentum. That we're really uh, pressing the case out there, for, I guess, too. But uh, but uh, but great insight there, well, Kumar. Definitely appreciate the great insight on that. Uh, it's good to catch up with you and get some uh, information on what you guys have been up to, and also some insight into the industry as a whole as well. So we definitely appreciate the time and, uh, and insight on that. So thanks so much. Well, thank you, Dan, uh, for your time too. Very good. All right, we'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks again. Well, that'll do it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check us out again next week when we are scheduled to speak with Serba on using SDN to control workload placement with greater mobility, hidden benefits, and how to get ROI from SDN. NFV SDN Reality Check with Dan Meyer is a production of RCR-TV. To suggest show topics or to reach Dan, you can find him on email dmeyer at rcrwireless.com and on Twitter at Meyer underscore Dan. For more Dan, news on NFV SDN and everything wireless, find your way over to rcrwireless.com.